va quitter l'univers des Tekel euh, et autres Snowden et vie privée. On va partir euh, sur un tout autre, euh, une, un tout autre aspect en tout cas de, de l'open source. En prenant l'exemple, euh, l'histoire de VLC et Vidéolan et les problématiques légales auxquelles ces deux structures ont dû faire face euh, en recevant le président de VLC et fondateur de l'association Vidéolan Organization créée en 2008, Monsieur Jean-Baptiste Kempf. Je vais Hi. Um, today I'm going to speak about VideoLAN and VLC, and especially about the legal aspects um, that we face um, quite often. Uh, I'm sorry, I usually do very funny presentation, and everyone laughs, and I have a lot of stories. Uh, I invite you to look at my other presentation, because this one is not really funny. But uh, I'm going to do my best. Um, so I'm here to speak about VideoLAN. VideoLAN is a nonprofit organization. Um, that started by an, op uh, an open source project uh, 15 years ago at the Ecole Centrale Paris, um, and that still lives on. So this is a very funny story about how um, VLC became more popular than the school it originated in, the Ecole Centrale Paris. Um, the Ecole Centrale Paris is an interesting um, university because it's in south of uh, Paris, And contrary to all the other main universities of France, um, the, the place where the university is built um, is not owned by the, um, the university or by the French government. It's owned by the alumni. The reason for that is that in the 1960s, um, L'Ecole Centrale Paris was in Paris and they needed to expand. And so they asked the state, of course, where to go. And the state said, well, you're the Ecole Centrale Paris, you should go to Clermont-Ferrand. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm still speaking about VLC, don't worry, seriously. Um, <laughs> and so they say, okay, no, no way. So the alumni went and bought a piece of land ne ne next to the Parc de Sceaux and said, okay, we bought this piece of land, you can build your university. Uh, you can see it, it's a beautiful square with an amazing 1960s architecture. Um, advice to go there. But what's important is that the rest, um, everything else, is, uh, was done by alumni um, with the money of alumni and of uh, big sponsors like Bouygues. Um, the rest, because of that, um, the network of the Ecole Centrale Paris was managed by students uh, and done by a non profit organization named Via Centrale Réseau. And it was built in the 1980s, and it was really cool, except it was using token ring. Um, maybe some guys around know what token ring is. It's a very cool technology um, that was completely obsolete already when it was started. And one of the biggest issues about that, it's an, a ring. Um, so the network data goes through every op, uh, and the more you put, uh, the more you put computers in the network, the slower it gets. Um, it doesn't matter just to go on internet, but when you want to play video games, it sucks because the latency is very high and you get killed by whatever you're fighting against. Um, and so the student said, hey, we want a new network, something fast. And they said, what do you need it for? Well, uh, you know, we would like to play, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no way, <laughs> no way. And you know what? This is not our, our buildings. We cannot build it. We can't put the money. And so that's how the straits say, well, you can't do that. Um, so they went to see a few people, and especially people from TF1 and Bouygues, and some guy said, okay, if you can take um, the f networks, uh, the satellite uh, streams from Astra, and destroy your network, because 10 megabits it was going to be destroyed, well, if you can do that, we pay you a network. Okay. <laughs> and so that was in 1994, so there was no Pentium, well, there was the beginning of Pentium, no MMX, so doing that in real time was crazy. Um, 15 years later, we are still around. Um, Um, we are doing open source in the old-fashioned way, uh, meaning that, a contrario from a lot of you, um, we are only volunteers, and we do that on our free time with no money. Um, it's cool, uh, because then we are very free, and we can do a few stuff uh, legally that other people would be scared to do. Um, so, Videolan has many projects, but the main one is VLC, also known as the Cone Player. You know this small cone that plays video? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was 
um, very real marketing reasons, especially done by students that were maybe not could completely um, not drink. Um, and uh, it stayed, and it's a great thing because very people, a lot of people recognize it. But it's also good um, because it's used a lot. Um, VLCs download between 900,000 and 1 million per day. Um, since we started counting, we have more than 1.5 billion downloads on, the, on our website. And as, of course, it's open source. We don't count Linux distribution. We don't count people from download.com, telecharger.fr, and all those people who redistribute VLC. Um, we are in one every CMAX, CMAC and on the top 15 uh, software on Windows that are not uh, done by Microsoft. And, and we're here in Paris. We are the most used French software by a large margin. Um, we're also probably the one that is the least uh, profitable per user, but, well, <laughs> we don't care. Um, the reason why VLC is popular is because VLC is here to play everything. We play all kinds of formats, um, from DVDs to Blu-rays to very weird QuickTime formats of the 1990s um, to other game codecs, um, or also MIDI and, and the Commodore files. Um, VLC is very resilient, and because it was done to work on a network, um, it was, from the beginning, made to resist to errors. And that made it very popular, because, for example, when you were downloading stuff, which, of course, none of you were doing, um, in 2003 or 4 on Emule, and you were downloading, I don't know, a Disney movie, after, like, 10 megabytes, VLC is still able to play the file, because VLC does not need the whole file, because, well, your network, it could fail. So after 10 megabytes, you can see if you were watching, you actually have a Disney movie or an adult one. Or if you were downloading an adult one, that you're not going to get a Disney movie. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, this is one of the stuff that makes uh, VLC quite popular. And also because you didn't have to install those crazy codec packs. VLC runs everywhere, and when I mean everywhere, uh, it's also on OS2 now, uh, where the port finished two years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> On iOS, Android, we're working a lot on Windows Phone and BlackBerry, well, everywhere, uh, because uh, VLC can run ev everywhere, and there are people everywhere. Um, this is like the first DVD we played um, with uh, VLC. Um, it's GoldenEye, and as you, because of, uh, there was the first DVD, they got all the version of uh, VLC until the version 1.0 got named after uh, GoldenEye characters. And this is the latest version, well, still around with GNOME 3 and some ponies, because ponies are cool. Um, so, um, VLC. Uh, so, we're a bit uh, a poil à gratter. People, and I know also people around here, are not really happy of seeing us uh, because we are pain in the ass. Um, we don't care. Um, we are here. We fight against DRMs. Um, because for many reasons we need DRMs to be open. Um, we don't care about patents, um, and the result of that is that we fought against Adobe, I'm going to speak about that. We re fought about against Dolby, um, MPEG-LA. I receive um, lawyers' letters every week at my place, really nice, if you want uh, have a very nice collection. But the result is also that usually uh, we're rarely invited to conferences, um, especially even in France, and usually the French government and pouvoir public are never inviting us, even uh, on the open uh, conferences at Bercy and so on. So we need to, to cry to get invited. Um, that's the deal. But the reason because of that is mostly because we are too annoying and we don't fit in the normal cases. Um, because we don't make any money, right? So we're not helping the French economy, yet we show that French technology can be around. DRM. Uh, so what is a DRM? A DRM is a way where I give you a file, I give you a, f a key also, and I say, please, don't look at the key. Um, because in the end, you want at some point to play it, right? So if you want to play it, you need to open the file. Whether at the end it's going to be displayed on your screen, on your speakers, and somewhere. So DRMs is a technology that is broken by design. I'm just like not saying Richard Stallman because he's saying that, but it's just like common sense. Give the file the key and say, 
no, 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 don't look the key. And even at the end, all the DRMs are broken because at the end you could just like plug something in the screen and get every pixel back. Um, one of the common issue about uh, DRM is people believe it's to block piracy. DRM is not to block piracy. And because if it was, it would be a complete failure. All of the DRM have been broken, all of them. And so why do people spend millions on that? Well, because DRM is very effective to do what it's done for, which is controlling the distribution. DRMs are sold to politicians and the public to control piracy because it's bad, but the re answer is, the reason it's because they want to control the distribution so that people in the movie theaters are going to pay their dime on everything they do. And people at the FNAC and everyone in the industry is going to pay the dime to the right people and obey the right rules. Um, so, um, VLC, uh, Videoland was the um, original um, developer of LibDVD CSS, which is a way to open DVD uh, DRM. It's not DECSS, uh, that was done by uh, John Lesh Johansson and other stuff. Um, and DVD was a lot of, on discussion in 2005, 6, 7 with the EU CD uh, directive that was pushed in France by the DADFC uh, law. Um, and it was very complex. Uh, that law is completely broken because it doesn't mean anything. Um, we're going to see that. And it was so confusing that uh, the French April, uh, thank God for them, uh, had to ask the Conseil d'Etat to explain. And the Conseil d'Etat made an array saying, no, no, Basing, rejecting the request of April saying, no, we reject your, 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 your request because you're right. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, done by the DATC was done something called ARMT, which is uh, as Agence uh, de Régulation des Mesures Techniques de Protection, basically a DRM agency. And those guys were awesome. They did not even respect their own law. Um, they were paid, five of them, very well. Um, to, and they didn't, at least to do reports. Uh, the first report they did was to say, basically, the array of the Conseil d'État is void. You probably don't have the rights to do that. And then they forgot to, 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 pay, to publish the papers uh, afterwards. Great job. Um, and, what happened um, when they created the Adopi law, my dear friend uh, Toubon, um, IRMT was merged in Adopi. So, stage two, um, DRM regulation was at IRMT, that wasn't, they had no idea what they speak about. Uh, Adopi was clearly as many issues, but on the DRM, they have no idea. Why? Because they were not done for that. So, someone, a legislator, say, hey, you're going to merge IRMT in you, and they're just like, uh, do you have any choice? No? Okay. Uh, and they don't understand. Um, and also, they have to manage a law that makes no sense. So, um, what's important with Adopi is that they have two kinds of saisine. The usual one is the, I'm sorry, contentieux. Um, so, you have one DRM that is not interoperable. Then you ask the guy who's mailed the DRM, and when they give it, when, when they refuse to give you the information, then you go and attack, and Adopi is supposed to, to do the judge. And the second was a, a mission of generic question about DRM law and the application. Um, especially since the French law says that basically you can circumvent DRMs in order to achieve interoperability, but without breaking copyright. Uh, yes, and which one is more important, interoperability or copyright? You don't know, it's not precise, <laughs> good luck. Um, which is why the Adopi was completely confused about that and they're right to be confused. Um, so we ask a generic question, especially because there are new kinds of DRM. The DVD, DVD CSS DRM was a very broken DRM, uh, very ineffective uh, from a, a cryptographic standpoint. Uh, but the new ones, new ones are coming, especially for Blu-rays, but also ultraviolet. And so we asked, we did a generic season, which was, what are the conditions to share the keys? Um, what are the conditions that can be imposed to us by the people who are going to say, well, basically, yes, you can. Uh, here are the key, but you need to protect it. How can we deal with that when we are open source? And also, can we distribute a source code of a DRM library? Yes, no. Can we distribute a static build inside VLC? Because we just do the playback. Because to play something at some point, you need to open it, right? Can we do a shared object? 
uh, because if a shared object, maybe another, another software is going to use VLC shared object to break the DRM, can we share the keys? So th those were very generic and large questions that would apply to many, um, many DRMs. The answer from Adopi was, <laughs> so it took them 17 months to get an answer. We had to push a lot in the press. We had to have a public question to the, uh, uh, to the government at the Assemblée Nationale to get anything. Uh, they pushed back stuff with vague meetings and repeated lies over and over that we are working for them. And then at the next meeting, we realized that they had no idea. And the, the answer was, mm, for the key, you should ask Sony. Yes, and you should do a contentieux. Yes, we ask you a generic question just to have like a legal standpoint, you know, just, and the keys are not part of the source code. Yes, no one said it was. Um, but what we answer after that, that were a lot of back meetings with AES, AACS LA and Sony and Universal who were pushing a lot on this setting. And, you know, this is how DRMs work. It's just a big corporation behind who are fighting us. Codex. Um, the second big part where we have a lot of issues is codex. All the codex are heavily patented, uh, especially in the US. Most of them are patenting just basic math. math. Um, they are usually incredibly expensive to license. We speak about $1 per device. Um, and they have numerous patents uh, covering everything, so there is a big cartel of a few five who have all the patents and are exchanging. Uh, one of them is uh, France Telecom. Woo! Um, um, and they are very aggressive. Uh, people like Dolby and Pegale, you have, you've seen uh, Tristan Nito, uh, you see how many issues they had uh, with uh, Firefox and H.264 on the open web. Uh, but most of the thing is, those patents are not even legal in, in France and have never been challenged to court. The, the, the European uh, OEB accepts those patents because the more they access patents, the more money they get, but that doesn't mean those patents are valid. And in France so far, it was always deemed invalid. But you have a very strong lobby uh, for many of them, and I'm going to explain just one so you get the idea, which is Dolby. So Dolby is the worst ever. Um, it's used everywhere. Uh, Dolby Digital um, is something you have in DVDs, Blu-ray, TNT, um, DVB-T, DVB-S, uh, in all the movie theaters, and Dolby is a professional codec that is pushed everywhere. Um, Dolby Digital is a DVB, ISO, ATSC spec, which is a standard um, that is ratified with your money, your tax money. Um, with the Etsy, it's uh, completely standard by the Etsy in France, at Nice, and is mandated by the Conseil Supérieur de l'Audiovisuel. And it's heavily lobbied in. Uh, so, for example, extended A53, which is an extension of the codec that no one uses, um, was the, one, the thing that blocked the TNT HD in France for two months, uh, two years, because Canal Plus was lobbied lobbying a lot to get extended AV3. The quality of this codec is very debatable, but some of the patents are five years beyond the first one, which is why um, Canal got some reduced fee from Dolby. And of course, all the Dolby products are in all the professional cameras. But come on, what the great of, thing of Dolby is their scam. They have one license, and this license is what they call IP license, which covers codec implementation, Patents, certification, logo, testing, and their reference implementation. Um, so it's really cool because the problem with patents is that they expire after 20 years. And Dolby patents, which were in the DVDs, are now mostly expired. But if you have a license for everything, including copyright, it can be 70 years after the death of the author, which are going to be a long time. And they don't they refuse to share the patent list, so you cannot implement in France legally um, Dolby uh, digital decoding because there is no way. You cannot get access to the patent list. You, they refuse to share it. You cannot license it, and that is done with the, the approval of the Conseil Supérieur de l'Audiovisuel and all those French um, um, legal and government. They know about that. It was reported to the Conseil National du Numérique and others. They don't care. Um, and they. They even abuse the usual tool, which is DMCA and um, LCA, LCEN, because basically they call, hey, this is an IP violation. The problem is that DMCA is just for copyright violation. But as they have just one big, very obs um, obscure thing, they push and they complain about everything. And then you get DMCA takedowns, notice all the time, for something that could be just a patent. 
Why is no one doing anything? Everyone is scared. If you don't have, if you're, uh, if you're in the video industry and you don't have a Dolby license, you're fucked. They're going to sue you. They're going to, 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 uh, to make you cost, the, the, the court system is going to cost you millions and you're going to kill your business. So no one, everyone pays. It's just like mafia, but it's fine. And I took already too much time. We could discuss about all those things later. Thanks a lot. Thank you.